Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here going over some new tips. Sorry, so my class is uh, in the learning process of going over some coils and how to use coil technique to build uh, their ceramic pieces. So my class is learning about coils and how to use the coiling process, the coiling techniques uh, to create their pieces uh, in my intro ceramics class. All right, so the first one is the surface that you're working on. So the tables that I that we use in my class are these uh, masonite kind of topped tables. And now this is a great surface to work as, a, as an art table. However, uh, when it comes to clay and ceramics, these are actually really, really bad. All my students have boards, we have wooden boards. So my students, they use wooden boards like this. Some just really simple boards that are just wood and that's it. You don't want anything else on them. Uh, I do have canvas on some of them that are some burlap canvas here. Uh, this helps if you want to do texturing as well as uh, if you're rolling something out, you can lift it up and it makes the process a lot easier to pull the clay out. Reason that they work on those things instead of the mason is because this stuff sticks to clay really bad. And the reason it sticks to clay is because this is a very non-porous uh, surface. So when the clay, when the soggy clay gets directly on there, it turns into like this massive suction cup and you can't pull that stuff up. You got to use a scraper and get that to get off the table. So my students, they use the board. So that as they're rolling out, they're building that stuff up. It comes off the board a lot easier because the boards are porous. There's that little bit of airflow in between uh, the board and the clay. And that helps it to where as you're building, you can work off of that a lot easier. Now today you guys are going to be working on three big elements and principles of art. Number one is balance. Number two is form. And the last one there is rhythm. All right. Now the reason that we're working on these three things are balance. You're building something. You don't want the thing to fall down because that would break and that'd be bad. Um, one of the things that I showcase with my students is uh, one of my loot crate buddies. Uh, this one here, you can see how it's just a... Uh, uh, I love this because it's from, this is a, a character from the fifth element and they use an old school retro uh, NES game cartridge. Uh, but the feet on this thing, look, those, those feet, this thing doesn't like the balance. You said yeah. And uh, sometimes he stands, sometimes he falls on his face. And that is very important because as you guys are building your pieces, you need to make sure that they're properly balanced because you don't want to fall over, crash, just bad stuff happens. The second one there is form. So as you're going, are you making the right shape? Are you trying to do more of a cylinder? Are you trying to do more of a vase? Uh, is it supposed to come out and be more bulbous on the sides? These are things I want you guys to be thinking about. Make sure you put some stuff down in your sketchbook so that helps you out. Uh, and the last one there is rhythm, pattern. Uh, as you guys are going through there, the, that rhythm, that repetition of movement is essential to making these, these pieces really functional. While my students are working on their pieces, I, I really stress to them, coil, it's about a quarter of an inch, which is about the width of your pinky nail. And as they're rolling them out, they don't just smack the clay down and start just rolling and making those snakes. Not gonna happen that way. Reason being is because if you just start trying to do this, your hand is going at a diagonal that's going directly into the board, directly into that tabletop surface, which is not what you want to do. You want to roll your hands back and forth. The reason that you're rolling back and forth is that you get that round, that cylindrical shape. If you go just stabbing at it, you're just gonna make flat snake things or just flat on one side, it doesn't work as well. Now, also, as you're rolling out, you're gliding over that clay, you're really going to use this part of your palm. You want to stick between the knuckles here and the ball of your hand. As you're going back and forth, that gives you that most cylindrical curve. And again, you're gliding over that clay, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Put a little bit of pressure down. As you're rolling, I roll and move my hands out and away from me. So just like a baker, you're rolling, 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 pressing out and away from you, get those nice, perfect cylindrical snake pieces, roll them around in a coil to create those coil vases. And as that's happening, you're gonna see a, a continuous pattern, a rhythm start to progress. And as you start rolling around, fusing those lines together, make sure that you're fusing them as you are building and don't wait till the last second because I've had several students who will build a piece. Uh, it's kind of similar to this and they won't seal them as they're moving up and that's a huge problem because it'll start to snap and pop apart uh, and it breaks and it's just not going to fire well so make sure that you're sealing as you're moving up 
All right, class, thank you for joining me today. As always, if you have a question, raise your hand down in the comments below, and I will see you guys next class. Until then, later, guys. Yes, man, because you have picked up.